Hey folks, Clint Powell here. This is what I call a raw video. I have not sent it off to en to the uh, engineer. It's not been cleaned up. It's not been modulated or or uh, evened out sound levels. There's no music, nothing. It's just I hit record and I post it. Um, it allows me to get it to get it out a little quicker. Here's the deal today, though. If you're a young kid, I guarantee you, you've had adults or uh, parents say this to you. Who you surround yourself with matters. Guess what? That never changes. It never changes. Who we put in our lives um, is super important because as much as you think you are Superman or Wonder Woman, they will rub off on you. Energy is contagious. Those you surround yourself with that have healthy ideas of relationships, that are motivated, that have uh, that continually want to learn, try to make good decisions, may fail, but they try, they want to achieve, that rubs off on you. You surround yourself with people that are complacent or complainers, always looking for the easy way out, that'll rub, uh, rub off on you. Um, now, this is not so much about that except for this one small component of it. As you get older, <clears throat> so this is something to look forward to, young folks, and if you're older, you'll kind of understand it. As you get older, and you know what, sitting here talking about it, it's really not so much about age. You can be a young person and have goals and still run into this. A lot of times, though, as a young person, you you don't know any better, so you just push ahead no matter if people tell you yes or no. But as you get older, it's easy for people to poo-poo your ideas. Now, I'm not talking about having people in your life to give you pushback, critical feedback. Yes, we need that. So let's put that to the side. So I'm not going to have a squirrel conversation about that. What I am talking about are people, when you say, I want to write a book, and people go, what would you say in your book about your life? What is outstanding about your life? I want to do a radio show. I want to do a podcast. I want to own my own business. I want to travel. I want to go to these 10 countries. I want to uh, share my testimony. I want to become a speaker. I want to get a new job. I want to, I want to, I want to. You've got to have people in your life that give you the other side of the coin, right? Are you prepared? Have you learned? All those things are yes. Again, for the second time, I'm going to do, I'm going to qualify this and say, we get that. I am saying there are groups of people, there are strands of people out there that will tell you no, not trying to help uh, create in you a, uh, they're not trying to create a conversation where they can actually crystallize the ideas, right? They're not giving you feedback because they care and saying, okay, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? That's cool. Have you, what about this? Now, you don't like this. Do you like that? They're not doing it for that reason. They're doing it because their default is, why would you, who would listen to you? Who's watching you? Why would you want to waste your time doing traveling? Why would you want to get a new job when you have the, they're poo-pooers, right? They're the negative Nancys, the downer Davids. And I am telling you, as you get older, the only thing that you have that is that you can uh, really, really spend is time. You can't make it up. You can't create more of it. You can only spend it. And it's going to be spent whether you're intentional about it or not. And at the end of the day, and I listen to a great motivational guy, uh, a couple of them every morning, there's one, and I, I, I'm going to get it wrong, so I don't think it's Les Brown, but I'll, I, there's someone out there, and I'll, I'll try to post it. But And I've posted it several times. That around your deathbed is going to sit skills and dreams and goals and strengths and things that were unique to you. And when you die, if you do not try to utilize them uh, to to uh, make them the best versions of themselves inside you, they die with you. They die with you. So the reason I'm even bringing this up is this. Here, here's here, all of that to get to this point. Is it possible? I believe in God. You may believe in God. You may believe in karma. You may believe in a, in a bigger uh, source of power than you. But is it possible that that is motivating and driving you or wanting you to pursue those things not for any other reason other than to feel like you found yourself, but also there may just be one person that reads the book. 
There may just be one person that listens to the podcast, that listens to your testimony, that watches you pursue a new job, that that watched you not settle for complacency and for the easy way, but you pushed to, to, to go for that degree when you're 40, to start traveling when you haven't, to start taking things seriously when they need to be taken seriously and then lighten up when they need to be lightened up because you realize life is short. It could just be there's a handful of people that are watching you and the book has nothing to do with masses of people. Your dream, your goal, of course, is for you so you can live the best version of your life but nothing in this world happens in a vacuum. It is 100% possible and I would say the odds are high That whatever it is inside you that is ticking, let's go, let's go. You thought of it when you were 30. You wanted to do it when you were 40. Why are you still in this job? Why have you not started that company? Why have you not written that song? Why have you not started writing poetry? Why have you not started doing this? Why have you not asked that person to, you know, spend more time with this person? Why, why, why? As time goes by, that thing that's ticking inside of you is for you but it also for people that are watching or observing you that you may not even know. So the purpose of this, as I'm, as I'm driving around today, was, you know, you've got these in your mind. I'm talking you, me, you, whoever tunes in. We've got these things in our brain that we kind of want to do. Some of them can make us some money. Some of them we can't make money at it. That's okay. It doesn't mean it's a waste of time. When other people look at you and go, that's a waste of time, it may be a waste of their time because it's not their dream. It's not their goal. It's not given to them, right? So, yeah, it might be for them. But for you, it may scratch that itch. It may feel that need. And because it comes from you and because it's authentic and because it's who you're, re- you're being who you are, your message will resonate with the people it is supposed to resonate with. That could be one. It could be 10,000. It could be 10 million. It could be a family member. You may have a cousin watching you, a grandparent. You may have a child, uh, a, a brother or sister, a good friend, someone that you don't know that as soon as you start becoming who you think you should become in a positive manner, as soon as you start that journey, and I'm not talking about the selfish kind that goes, it's all about me and everybody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you truly start going after what you know you should be going after, they take notice. Well, if they can do that, why can't I? I don't want to write a book and I can't sing, but I sure would love to do blank. Fill it in. So my challenge for me and you today, is to pursue those dreams. If you can make money at it, great. If you can't, that's okay too. And don't let people who question you out of a place of either jealousy or not understanding or never having the guts to try, to, to chase their own dreams, don't let those people convince you that, oh, it probably is a waste of time. I should probably just enjoy this job until I die. And you might. You might need to keep that job until you die. It does not mean that you should not spend your time, right? That's what we spend. We don't spend money. We make money. We go out and give it back and what? Give it away. But we actually invest our time. It is going away. But don't let those people tell you what to do with what's been given to you on the inside. And here's the last part of that. There are people waiting for it. There are people, they're looking across the landscape of all their contacts and everybody's stuck in this. I'm in, my, I'm in my daily routine, which we all have to have. I'm in my habits, which we all have to have. But I'm watching this. I'm looking over. I'm on the mountaintop. Everybody's on their little mountaintop peak and we can see the people around us. And we're just waiting for someone to jump up and take off running. And we're going, oh, that is so freeing. If you're older, when you drive by a park and you see kids just or teenagers just running playing sports, and you think to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm stiff and I'm tired and my joints hurt. Do you ever think back and go, man, I, I'm, I wish I could still feel that free? 
that's the exact same way it's going to feel to your soul. It's going to feel to your mind. It'll bring a certain amount of clarity. As soon as you sit down and go, you know, it's time to get up and run after something, after something. And, and here's the last thing I, I said I was going to wrap it up. I'm going to say this one, one more thing. A lot of times you can watch five motivational videos. You can go hear 10 motivational speakers, and I can Google self-help right now on, on, on the Internet, and I can find 100 different programs. You know what program works the best? The one that you invest in and fits your life. A lot of times we get paralyzed by trying to find the best system when truly we'll find the best system if we just start. And also we try to use other people's systems because we don't stop and think of what really we're wanting to do. What, what am I really wanting to chase? We don't sift through the dirt to get to the gold. The real benefit of being motivated shouldn't just come from activity it should become from it should come from activity with purpose, with intent, with a desire, with knowing where it's going. And that only happens if you sit down and you think, okay, I'm motivated. What am I going to do with that? The benefit of thinking in itself, that benefit, after I've sifted through it, should be, you know, my passion, the thing that I really don't want to die without having to have tried or done or gone for are these things. Now I can put a system in place that benefits me. I don't have to do what The Rock does or Jocko Wilnick. I don't have to do what Oprah